I've recently switched from my main lab power supply, the Rigel DP832, to three of Corad KA3005P power supplies. There's no right or wrong answer as to which is the better choice and both have their pros and cons, so in this video I'm going to try to fairly compare the two against each other and give you the reasons why I switched from the Rigel to the three Corad units. We need to compare the one Rigel against three of the Corad supplies combined because the Rigel is a single three channel supply while each of the Corad units only has a single channel. In reality the Rigel is a bit at a disadvantage here because technically it only has two independent channels but we'll get into that later. First up we are going to compare physical measurements. The Rigel unit is a bit smaller from the faceplate but has much more depth. In total, the Rigel's width height depth is 21 by 14 by 38 centimeters, while the Corad stack is 33 by 16 by 24 centimeters. Each of the Corad supplies is 11 centimeters wide, so the volume is around 11 liters for the Rigel against around 13 liters for the Corad stack. The weight of the Rigel is 10.6 kilograms, while each Corad supply weighs about 4.4 kilograms, totaling 13.2 kilograms for the whole stack. The advantage here of course is that if you do not need all three channels for a job you can choose to only take one or two of the Corad units while for the Rigel you always have to take the whole thing. Price wise the Rigel is quite a bit pricier than the Corad. The Rigel currently sells for around 500 euros at Batronix while the Corad stack goes for a total of 327 euros at Reichelt or around 109 euros per unit. That means the Rigel is more than 1.5 times as expensive as the Corad stack. Interestingly, I found this pricing higher than I had remembered and looked up what I paid for the Rigel in December 2013, so about 4 years ago. Sure enough, I bought it back then for 362 euros, almost 140 euros cheaper than it costs today. While I found the pricing back then quite fair, I must say that I find 500 euros today a bit steep for the Rigel. Let's come to the technical features. In the beginning I mentioned briefly that the Rigel is not a full 3 channel unit but only has two independent channels. This means that channel 2 and 3 share one common ground. While I knew this when I bought the unit I rarely need a full 3 channels. Sure enough by the time I needed them I had forgotten about it and was annoyed that I had changed my setup around because the intended way wouldn't work. Of course in the core ads each channel is entirely separate. Also note that the Corads have a higher rating. Each of the Corad channels can deliver up to 31 volts at 5.1 amps or around 158 watts of power. The Rigel's channels 1 and 2 deliver up to 32 volts at a maximum of 3.2 amps or around 102 watts each while channel 3 can only go up to 5.3 volts at 3.2 amps or 17 watts. Therefore the Rigel delivers a total power of 221 watts while the Corad stack can deliver up to 474 watts, more than twice that of the Rigel. Note that earlier models of the Corad had a fatal design flaw which caused the units to burn up under heavy load. Dave Jones of the EEV blog made a video about this. However, Corad did the right thing and fixed that bug in a later revision. To the best of my knowledge, all Corad units sold today should have that bug fixed for some years now. I link all the relevant videos if you want to learn more about the issue. Let's turn both units on to get a first impression of them. Note that on my Rigel I have already replaced the fan by a much more silent variant, so I cannot show you the stock fan. I've also created a video about that modification which I'll also link below. Note that the stock fan of the Rigel is pretty bad, but the stock fan of the Corad is downright broken. I've never heard a brand new fan that made such broken bearing noises. Absolutely terrible. Listen for yourself. Like this I would never use the Corad because the sound is incredibly annoying, but like the Rigel I've also modded the fan of my Corad supply and actually put in a little AT tiny microcontroller to have temperature control. Therefore under little load the fan does not even turn on now. This is my modded Corad. <laughs> 
note that I've made a couple of modifications to my corets and I'm planning to do a video about that in the future as well when I've put everything together. I link this as well as soon as it's finished. There was one thing in particular that annoyed me about the Rigol and that is the current limiting. When the device goes into current limiting mode there's no clear indication like an LED lighting up and it's very easy to miss. This means that if your current setting is too low for the attached hardware, for example during startup, the voltage will rise too slowly and you can get all sorts of weird issues. Of course this is easily fixed by just cranking up the current, but it really is a shame that it's not clearly indicating that it's switched from CV to CC mode. This is done very well on the CoRED and I believe that the electronics in the CoRED that control the LEDs are completely analog, so they are incredibly responsive. You are therefore able to pick up even tiny amounts of current limiting that are happening, which is quite useful in my opinion. Also the refresh rate of the digital displays is much more responsive in the CoRED, which I really like. Let's try to capture the frame rate on camera. First up we use the Rigol. I'll create some short circuits to have lots of changes in current and voltage. When reviewing the video footage in slow motion, I calculated an average of around 2.8 display updates per second for the Rigol, while at a 30fps frame rate I wasn't able to determine the update rate of the CoRED because it was too quick. So according to Nyquist Shannon, this means that the CoRED update rate is at least 15 frames per second. Definitely has a very instantaneous analog feel to it, at least 5 times quicker than the Rigol. In terms of accuracy, however, the Rigol clearly wins. I've checked both current and voltage against my Fluke 87V. In terms of voltage error, the Rigol beats the CoRED clearly by a factor of around 2 to 3. However, for my purposes, this really is less of a deal than what it might sound like. For example, at 3.3 volts, the CoRED deviates minus 0.2%, producing 3.295 volts, while the Rigol with its 3.302 volts is 0.06% off from the set value. In absolute terms, however, this means minus 5 millivolts versus plus 2 millivolts. For me, the higher display update rate justifies this drop in accuracy, but your mileage may vary. One thing that is a real issue for me with the Rigol is the turn on power spike. When turning on the power, the channels turn on for around 300 milliseconds. Again, Dave Jones has already talked about this before, but I get a slightly different result than his discovery. On his DP832, the voltage spike carries no power and disappears when the channel is under load. On my unit, however, I get a similarly tiny spike if the channel had been turned off before the whole unit was shut off, but I get the 300 millisecond spike when the channel was turned on when the unit was shut off. To demonstrate that the spike does carry power, I've connected a 6 volt light bulb up to channel 1. You can clearly see that the light bulb flashes briefly when the power is turned on. Since I do switch off my whole electronics workplace with a master switch, the power supply comes alive as well when it's turned back on and therefore I've experienced this exact issue in the past. It is especially annoying when you have sensitive equipment connected up to the supply and forget to disconnect it before powering up the workplace. In any case, the CoRED does not have a similar issue. So all in all, where does this leave us? I'll try to sum it up. The Rigol definitely has its accuracy going for it. It also has a number of additional pay-to-use features which, due to a broken cryptographic implementation, can be easily hacked and are therefore easily unlockable even without paying money. Since it is only one device, it is also easier to transport. Downsides of the Rigol are its initial voltage spike and an unpleasantly loud stock fan, which I had to replace to make it less annoying. The CoRED stack isn't as accurate as the Rigol, but trades this in for a very responsive display update. It has a clearly visible constant current LED that alerts you when current limiting is in effect. Three of the CoRED supplies are still cheaper than one Rigol. Since it consists of three separate units, it is more flexible when you only need one or two channels for a remote job. None of the CoRED channels are dependent, that means it has a true three channels instead of two plus one as the Rigol. Its construction is simplistic and robust, which I definitely count as an advantage, because it means that it's going to be very easily repairable when something breaks. The CoRED supply is also very hacker friendly. There's a ton of space inside the housing to place your custom mod electronics in there and it has a really straightforward design that allows you to understand the inner workings even without a schematic. The main downside with the CoRED is that the fan is such a piece of work that for me it's basically unusable without modding it. So there you have it, now you be the judge. I hope this video showed you the reasons for my personal preference, but what's your opinion? I like to hear what you think and if I've missed something. As always, thank you very much for watching, hope you tune in the next time. Bye!